Okay, Assalamu alaikum everybody. Uh, welcome to our 13th annual Tawheed Conference. Today is, uh, what is it, June 8th, 2003, uh, Thursday. We're having a very informal meet and greet uh, session. Uh, tomorrow uh, starts the conference formally with a presentation, a few presentations, and uh, that will go right on through until the end of Saturday, and we'll leave on Sunday. So I want to thank, first of all, everyone for coming out and gathering with us. Uh, we had a few people who were at the last minute unable to make it, and we thank them for their intentions to uh, be with us. Unfortunately, they could not uh, fulfill those uh, commitments, and so, inshallah, we look forward to another time. So right now, what we want to do is uh, just have an open discussion about some different topics that uh, will come up, and uh, we'll see what the Quran has to say regarding those topics. Uh, the first thing I'd like to be uh, concerned with is the idea of making things haram, of Muslims in particular, making things, labeling things as haram and halal without any evidence from the Kitab Allah, the Book of Allah, the Quran. So I want to be uh, careful that uh, at this session that we deal with, which we're calling a Tawheed Conference, and we call it a Tawheed Conference because although the word Tawheed is not used in the Quran, we use it uh, in the sense that we talk about uh, the unicity of Allah, the absolute oneness of Allah, uh, that he exists necessarily by himself, having no likeness or equal uh, from all eternal eternity to uh, eternity. And so we want to not associate anything with Allah in any shape, form, or fashion. This is the type of tally we talk about. We don't talk about Allah and. There's no Allah and. When it says Allah and his messenger, it simply means to, to us, Allah and his message via the message messenger. And right now, in my view, the Quran is that message, and that Quran is that messenger, and whomever it reaches has received the message. So now, I want to talk about uh, the drinking <coughs> of wine. Wine. I'll say wine. <coughs> that will entail alcohol of any form, but I'll just use a, a mild term like wine. If I say uh, Hennessy, you know, drinking Hennessy, that sounds kind of rough, you see? But if I say wine, that sounds smooth, you know? So some people can say, wine, wine, that's smooth. I don't, do you drink? No, a little wine every now and then. Well, you drink. You drink a little wine, enough little wine will get you intoxicated. Enough little wine. So we say, is that lawful or unlawful according to the Quran? Now, the easy way to answer that is to open the Quran and say, here's the verse that says, drinking wine is haram. Drinking wine is halal. Can we find such a verse? You see? So let's see what Allah says about that type of issue. So anybody who got their Quran, they can open it and follow suit. <clears throat> uh, let's take a look in chapter 10, verse 59. Chapter 10, verse 59. And I'll just be quoting some verses, uh, not necessarily quoting the whole context. It's called quoting something... Uh, quoting the text. And some people will say, well, brother, you quoted that out of context. I say, well, that's what a quote is. A quote is a text quoted out of context. 
That's what a quote is. You put it back in the text, in the context. As long as what I'm saying agrees with the context, then there's no problem. I don't have to read the whole text, the whole chapter for you to get the idea of what I'm saying. I can just give you the text. So I'm going to give you a text and you can go and put it back in context and uh, see if it um, has the same sense. Say, chapter 10, verse 59, say, <clears throat> see you what Allah has sent down for you of sustenance, then you make a part of it unlawful and a part lawful. Say, has the law commanded you or do you forge a lie against the law? That's some heavy stuff there. That's some heavy stuff. Allah sends stuff down for you, something down for you, and you, humankind, make a part lawful and a part unlawful. And Allah says, ask the rhetorical question, uh, has he commanded you to do that? Which means he hasn't. That's a rhetorical question. He hasn't commanded you. Do you, by doing such, forge a lie against the law? Are you forging a lie against the law? You got time for that? No, yeah, that's some heavy stuff. Quran, chapter 16, verse 116. These are warnings, warnings. 16, verse 116. And utter not for what your tongues describe the lie. This is lawful and this is unlawful. So that you forge a lie against the law. Surely those who forge a lie against the law will not prosper. Here another warning. Don't have your mouth, your tongue utter something lawful and unlawful. And then by doing so, because of some persuasion that you have, maybe your upbringing, your background, your family, your tradition, your phobias or whatever mess you have. Uh, that you want to make something lawful and unlawful and then. And as a Muslim, you stifle law. That's something that you don't even know what you're talking about. You have no argument. You have no argument from a law, yet you're just doing that. And the law said, don't do that. Be careful. But yet you do it anyway. So now, here's something to ponder. Chapter 16, verses 66 through 69. <clears throat> Chapter 16, verse 66 to 69. 66. And surely there is a lesson for you in the cattle. We give you to drink what is in their bellies. And from between their uh, feces and the blood, there's pure milk agreeable to the drinkers. You can leave that light on. Thank you, sir. And the fruit of the palm and the grapes you obtain from it, intoxicants, saccharin, saccharin. From Allah says, from the uh, fruits of the palm, the date palm, I assume, assume that's what we're talking about here. And the grapes you obtain from it, intoxicants, and goodly provisions. There's surely a sign in this for people who ponder. There's a sign in that for people who ponder. So let's just stop right there. You can read the rest of the context. What does the law mean by this sign? What is this a sign in this? Does the law mean that strong drink made from dates and grapes was a sign of Allah's goodly provision to humanity? Is that what it is? That was meant by that? Hmm. Now, let's take a look at chapter 2, verse 215. Chapter 2, verse 215. And here, again, I wish I had some uh, first of all, my brother Salam uh, just showed up. <laughs> Salam alaikum. Good to see you, my brother. 
we'll, we'll get some good hugs in, in a few minutes. Always good to see you. Uh, here I'd like to ask this question to uh, some high-ranking uh, high Arabic-speaking scholar, high-ranking, not just some regular imam guy who studied Arabic somewhere and went to school and got some books behind him. Somebody of high authority, maybe some rector from Ashar University, uh, the teacher's teacher, you see. Uh, ask him, excuse me, can you explain this verse to me, chapter 2, verse 215? Tell me what it's saying. Chapter 2, verse 215. They asked you uh, what you should spend. Say, whatever wealth you spend, it is for the parents and the near of kin and the orphans and the needy and the wayfair. And whatever good you do, Allah surely is no of it. What does that mean? So what do you think they would uh, say? So let's read the context. Anybody got the context there? They can read it a couple of verses before, a couple of verses after. Maybe starting at 2.13 to 2.217 or something, if that looks like context to you. I want to know what this verse means. Should I read it from you? Read community? it, yes. Mankind were one community, and Allah sent prophets with glad tidings and warning. And with them he sent the scripture in truth to judge between people in matters which they deferred. And only those whom the scripture was given deferred concerning it after clear proofs had come to them through hatred of one another. Then Allah by his leave guided those who believed in the truth from that which they deferred, Allah guides whom he wills to the straight path. Verse 2 to 14, or do you think that you will enter paradise without such trials as came to those before you? They were afflicted with severe poverty alignments and were shaken even to the point where the messengers and those who believed along him said, when is the help of Allah coming? Certainly, the help of Allah is near. Okay, so that's the context. So now, can anybody maybe tell me now from reading that context, just as we're just lay people, uh, what do you understand chapter 2 verse, I mean verse 2, chapter 215, chapter 2 verse 215, what is that verse saying? They asked you about, they asked you what to spend, say whatever wealth you spend is for Allah and the, for the parents and the near kin and the office and the needy and welfare. What is that alluding to? What do you understand that to mean? Anybody? Anybody? Spending to get to the nearness, nearness to God. Excuse me? Spending to get near to God. Like spending. What does the verse say? They ask you, they're asking the, the messenger. They ask you, what should we spend? And, and, and he doesn't answer out of his own accord. Allah says, say. They are asking you, and Allah says, this is what you say to them. They're asking you, and Allah said, don't you open your mouth to try to answer nothing. I'll tell you what to say. Say this. What, 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 whatever wealth you spend is for the parents and for the near kin and for the orphans and the needy and the wayfair. And whatever good you do, Allah is surely know of it. So if you say, Yes, it's to get near to Allah. Well, we could say that, yeah. But it's the money that you spend, who you spend it for. Isn't that right? They're asking you, with our money, we got some money to spend. How do we spend it? Who should get it? That sounds like charity. Right? If you want to give in charity. You know, you have your wealth, you earn your wealth, you can have it, you, you can keep it. But if you want to be charitable, you want to spend in charity, then spend it on your parents, on your near kin, your mother and father. They should be the ones that if they, you, they're sitting there needing money, you over there spending it on your homeboy to get some Adidas or some North Face stuff. You see? So spend it on your parents or your near kin. You see, or the orphans, they could use it, or the, anybody that's needy, any needy person, or a wayfarer, a person that's lost his way or just traveling through and he's got nothing to hand out or something like that. Spend that charity on them, right? Very clear. Well, no problem with that, right? Good. 
So now let's take, let's hop over a couple of verses. That's chapter 2, verse 215. Let's just hop over to chapter 2, verse 219. Let's hop over there. Let's hop over to 2, 219. Here's another question. They ask you about intoxicants. They ask you about intoxicants, you know, because there are people who have been drinking and doing and all this and getting intoxicated, whatever they're doing or what they would like to, whether they've been doing or done, nothing, but they're asking you, don't you open your mouth and say nothing, what your preference is and all that. This is what you say to them. <clears throat> say, in both of them is, it's got translated here, is great sin and advantage for men. There's a, some, some good and some bad in them. And their sin is greater than the advantage. The sin is greater than the advantage. That doesn't cancel out the advantage. Just shows you that one is greater than the other, but advantage is still there in both of them. So, wow, that's heavy. So then the next question is, they ask you what we should spend. They ask you what we should spend. So, wow, didn't we just answer that? They ask you what we should spend. Didn't we just answer that in chapter 2, verse 215? Are they being silly now and just asking the same question again? They ask you what should we spend. It says what? What you can spare. What I can spare, that ain't what you just told me a little while ago. In chapter 2, verse 215, you says what I got can spend, spend it on my parents and the can and the wayfair and the need and all that kind of thing. You just start naming. You didn't say what I can spare. Maybe I can't spare nothing so my parents don't get nothing. If I can't spare nothing and my parents sitting there hungry and all that, I, you know, I, I, got to eat, you know, I ordered steak tonight and all that, and then my wife wants steak to dinner tonight. I said, well, excuse me, can't you eat some biryani? Now nah, she wants steak, sirloin. So I'm not going to miss that. This sirloin costs, you know what I'm saying, uh, $10 a, a pound or whatever, and I want two or three pounds of that. And my wife, my parents over there, they're eating a bowl of, uh, of chicken biryani. You're not too spicy. And that's like $6, $7. Nah. You think that's what this verse is talking about? It says, say what you can spare. Thus does the law make clear to you the messages that you may ponder. I'm simply saying this verse is talking about what you can spare on wine and drinking. That's what you that's what how much you can spend. How much can you spend what you can spare spare after you have taken care of your responsibilities. You have anything left over. You can use that on yourself for your sports wine and drinking. If you, you can do that when you have taken care of your responsibilities and you have money left over. Enjoy yourself. Just don't overdo. Don't overdo. Don't overindulge in either thing. Modesty is always the case. This is why we see don't come to Salah when you are intoxicated until you sober up. Once you're sober up, you can come. You're still not. You're still a little tipsy. But you know, I, I know what I'm saying and all that. You know, brother, you look like you've been drinking. Yeah, I was drunk this morning, but I'm OK now. I'm good. You sure? Yeah, I'm good. Well, your eyes look at yeah, I'm, I'm good. I know what I'm saying. So I'm saying, who's going to tell me now that this, what you should spend, is charity again? It's the same answer to the question that was given before. I'm saying, no, this question is about what you should spend on the subject matter. Wine and drinking and the law says, there what I see, what you can spare. That's what the words say, what you can spare. Surplus. What is left over after you have spent on your dependents' needs? The, the uh, rudiments 
portion of whatever you can spare without uh, detriment to your necessities of oneself or those who are in your care. This is what, in short, what I'm saying that, that verse means. Now, somebody got something to say about it that they can say something different, they wanna take exception to it because I'm simply saying, just tell me the difference between the two, what you should spend. The other one was charity. This one is about the subject, that's the subject matter. It's what you can spend about the things talked about, drinking and, and, and gambling. You think Allah doesn't want you to have any kind of leisure time, nothing in your life, what do you do? What do you do? Because you leave it to some of these Sunni Muslims, they're saying Allah said, you know, uh, Muhammad went up to get the Salah, and that was 50 Salahs. That means every 30 minutes or something, you're praying, 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 trying to get those 50 Salahs every day. You would have been just praying, praying, praying all day if Moses hadn't intervened and got you straightened out, according to your Hadith, according to your Sahih. Sahih. M Moses so saved you from that. Otherwise, you'd have been praying all day long. You wouldn't have nothing to spend, no time for nothing. That's what you're telling me that your Sahih uh, Hadith says. And so you got it broken down with all that negotiation down to five salahs and you don't even do them because you still debate debating that. I'm saying no, this is not that. My point is that this is talking about drinking and gambling, drinking and gambling after you as a human being, mankind, have taken care of your responsibilities and I got some chump change, some money left over. I want to get me a glass of wine. I want to play me a lottery ticket and all that because it's my money. All my bills are taken care of. I can do what I please. I've given my charity. I've done everything I got and I got enough left over a few dollars. Let me enjoy myself, please. Thank you. That's what I see. That's the verse. Now, any argument, I can go further with this. Let's, take, let's see if we can go further. <clears throat> First of all, I'd, I'd have to have somebody, I would want somebody sitting here to tell me that this verse is not about spending on wine and drinking. It's about charity. The other verse, tell me it's about that. And see how silly that sounds. And how far you can get with that. But Brian, there is no reference of this, you know, that uh, uh, gambling, it's in the verse. It said they ask you about games of chance and, and drinking. Allah says in both of them, there's good and there's bad. The bad outweighs the good because if you're overdoing gambling, you can see that's a problem. If you're overdoing drinking, that's a problem. But if you're in modesty, there's no problem. What's the problem? Won't you have uh, uh, wine in paradise? You, well, let's see. So I'm saying it's, it's in the verse already. We just read the verse. Let me read it again. Chapter 2, verse 219. They ask you about intoxicants and games of chance. Yeah. You see? Mesa, I think the term is, and saccharin or something like that. I'm not looking at the Arabic words. I'm just looking at the English. But... Anybody who knows the Arabic can look at the words. They're asking you about those two items. Allah says, say, in both of them is great sin and advantage for men. Advantage for men in both of them. So you say, well, okay, I can see the intoxicants is some advantage, you know, because back in the old days, you know, you used to see the little movies where the guy gets shot and the guy say, drink some wine and drink something you drink and then they to pull a bullet out of you and you little, you know, something like that, or they pour something on it and all that and try to sterilize it, and then that's something for you. Okay, so that's good. But what about the gambling? Will you see something going on with that? Well, that's good too. The person plays the dollar over here and he hits the lottery for $100. And they say the lottery money goes to help build the schools and fix the highways and all that, so it's like you're giving for that, but you, they, they reward you with something like that, but it's a way of you giving to help build up the society and all of that. That be what it is, that's not my argument. The argument is right here, it says in both of them is some good, some, the bad is there, 
but there's good for men. So now they come again and say, well, okay, if that's the case, how much should we spend on it? How much should we spend on those two things? It says what, what you can spare. That's what the Arabic translates to. What you can spare. That's what the words translate to. What you can spare. How much you can spend, what you can spare. What you can spare is not what you can spare, and what you can spare, you know, I can't spare nothing, so I don't do none of that. I can't spare. Imagine me going and having a drink, and then I said, well, brother, did you pay your phone bills? You know, there's two weeks, they got the red notice. Ah, look, I'm tired, I get these notices all the time. I'm gonna have me a drink and play some gambling with the guys tonight. Then come back home next week, and your phone is off, and your wife can't do nothing, your children, boo, your school can't call. I said, wow, I should have listened. I shouldn't have did that. I know I didn't have the money. I couldn't spare it. No, so you can't do that. It's not for you. But this guy here, I paid all my bills and all that. I got $200 here. Let me have me a glass of wine. It cost me $6. I'll chill. Let me buy me a lottery ticket. I still got a couple hundred dollars left. I'm good. So uh, we should spend on leisure after, like, parents... The orphans and what was listed, right? Uh, what you can, sp no, that's got nothing to do with orphans. That's something different. That's charity. That's a different kind of spending. That's charity. This is about spending on these two items here. This is, you can't, if, if, if your parents is needing food and stuff, you definitely can't afford this. We're talking about you, you was paid money in charity. Maybe something they call zakat, a sadaka, or whatever they like to call it, whatever it is. You paid that money on that. Now I got some more money here. You know, they say, brother, how much is your zakat? Two and a half percent, wherever they got that money from. Two and a half percent, five percent, ten percent, tithes, or whatever you do, I paid it. I still got some money. Well, what do you want to do with that? I want to have me a glass of wine and I want to go down and play the bingo machine. Bingo. Well, brother, you sure you can afford to do that? Yeah, I got all my bills paid. Everything is paid up and all. Everything is good. My personal household bills are paid. I don't owe my family to pay my the orphan and all. I don't owe them nothing. It's charity. I can give them. This I want to do for my own self. I'm saying they ask you, well, how much can we spend on these two things? This is what it is. This is, this is the subject matter, wine and drinking. How much should we spend on wine and drinking? What you can spare. That's the law's answer. Now, you got some other answer, somebody? You want to make it haram? Mother stuff a lot, that's haram. Show me the haram verse. Where? Where does it say haram? A lot, I just said, don't open your mouth to say haram. No, what a law didn't say to you. So show me haram. No. This verse, it's talking about it, it says what you can spend. All right, anyway, what you can spare, rather. Uh, let's look, look at chapter uh, 47, verse 47.15 What does this say? Should I read it? Yeah. The description of paradise which the pious will see, uh, which the pious have been promised is that in it are rivers of water that taste the, uh, rivers of water, the taste and the smell of which are not changed, rivers of milk of which the taste never changes Rivers of wine, delicious to those who drink. Rivers of clarified honey, clear and pure. Therein for them is every kind of fruit and forgiveness from their Lord. Are these like those who shall dwell ever in the fire and will be given boiling, mm -hmm. hot, boiling hot water to drink and cuts up their bowels? Look at that. Look at that. A parable of the garden. Allah has given you a parable of paradise. You haven't been there. You haven't seen it. But in chapter 2, verse 25, it says, What you will be given in paradise, 
you will say this is a similitude of what we had before. What you'll be given in paradise, you'll be give, you're given it right here now. Just on a grander scale, on a scale so beyond your ability to comprehend. But in this life, you can enjoy those fruits right here to your pleasure right now. And you'll say, wow, this is like what we had before. But on a much grander scale. So look what the law says. The parable of the garden, which is, uh, is, uh, which is a dutiful a promise. Therein are what? Bev uh, uh, what is it? Uh, I got it. High, uh, rivers, rivers oh, yeah. Rivers of water. Not uh, altered. Is it? Yeah, altering. Mm -hmm. Uh... Melon, the taste does not change. Uh, not altered for the worse. Correct. And rivers of milk, right? Mm -hmm. I got this kind of highlight that, that is not washed out. I'm not reading out it. And rivers of milk, uh, whereof the taste changes not. And look at this. Rivers of wine. Rivers, not just a glass of wine. Rivers of wine, not a glass of wine, rivers of wine. What? Look what Allah added on into this here. What? Delicious to the drinkers. The people who drink wine, oh, well, y'all will love this wine. The, the drinkers, you're, me, brother, I don't drink. Oh, no problem. It's not for you. Go get some milk. There's rivers of milk over there for you. Yeah, I don't drink. Yeah. Yeah, right. Go over there. There's the rivers of milk over there. Yeah, over the milk, rivers of honey. Yeah, I like honey. Is that special? Yeah, I love that. But me, I like wine. So, well, brother, over there, that's where you go. You used to drink back in the dunya, back before? Yeah, well, you'll love this wine. Look, delicious to the drinkers. How would Allah put that there? Delicious to the drinkers. And rivers of honey. They're in all fruits and protection. So Allah is going to give you something that's haram. Well, brother, you know, that wine won't make you intoxicated. Well, this wine won't make you intoxicated either if you don't guzzle it down like a fool. <laughs> it won't make you intoxicated either. Yeah. If you don't sit there and drink gallons of it. If you have a nice sip of wine, you think you're going to get intoxicated? It won't make you intoxicated. You see? So you'll have that wine there that you won't have to worry about getting intoxicated. You can drink all you want. Delicious to the drinkers. I'm a drinker. So it'll be delicious to me. You not? No problem. Go get your milk and honey. And your cookies. Go get some cookies over there. They got cookies. <laughs> yeah. Excuse me? This wine is very delicious. I didn't hear you. He said the wine is very delicious. Wine? Yeah. For, to me? To me it is. To, 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 me, to me, wine is delicious, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's, yeah, they make it from fruit, from grapes and stuff. They ferment it and make it from grapes. And this, you, you know, if it was, you don't think it's not delicious, they sell it in by the gallons out there. They said, wow, we're buying this stuff, it's horrible. No, I mean, they Huh? You never drank wine? Yeah, well, you wouldn't know, so you a milk and honey man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can go to the rivers of milk. It's no problem. You don't have to get involved. I'm saying, my point is, don't you come telling me, stroking your beard and it's all red. Well, not, let me not say that. It don't have to be red. But some of y'all make it red so it make you look more authoritative. But meanwhile, you're stroking brother stuff for law. You shouldn't be drinking wine. It's haram. I'm saying, who told you haram? Show me haram somewhere. 
haram, but Allah got halal wine in paradise, halal wine. What's the difference in the wine? You don't get intoxicated. Well, I'm saying you don't get intoxicated here either. Overindulgence in anything. Moderation is always the case with anything. You see, I used to eat with Brother uh, Zafalos samosas, and they would bring out plates of them, and I just stuffed my gut until I couldn't move. And then he'd have to send me home with plates of them. I'm saying, should I be eating all of that? No. I just stopped the day at IHOP, and I ate all that food, and I said, why did I eat that? I overindulged, but it was there, and I ate it. It's lawful. I had cheese omelet and pancakes and all that's lawful. But I ate all that whole big plate. I didn't eat all that, but it's lawful. I could have ate half of that, but I ate it all. Why did I eat it? Because it was there. But the guy went in the house and killed everybody. He said, why'd you kill him? Because they was home. <laughs> it's silly season. So delicious to the drinkers. I don't see nothing saying haram. So any questions about that? And we know that in chapter 4, verse 43, it says, Oh, you who believe, go not near your salah when you are intoxicated. The word is shakara, a, a shukara, shukara, rather, shukara, suka, sukara, sukara, the same word that's going to be used for what you're going to get in paradise. To what? Till you know what you say. Don't go when you've been drinking, when you're inebriated, when you're intoxicated, until you know what you say. Once you know what you say, go. No problem. Any questions about that any further? I'll, I'll stop there. I wanted to hopefully have some people here that could have challenged me further on some Arabic terms and, and put up a, a challenge on this here so we could kind of go at it. But now I'll just let this suffice. Uh, the two verses, 2, 215, how much should we spend? 2, 219, how much should we spend? This is charity. This is on the two things mentioned, what you can spare. Allah says what you can spare. That's my p point. And that's what I'm riding out on. I'm not saying anybody else has to understand that or take that point of view. I'm not saying you should drink and all that. I have a nice glass of wine whenever I can. I don't drink strong drink. I used to when I was in the street. I would drink a gallon of whatever you put in front of me. I don't care what it looked like. Back in the street, it could be a hundred. I wanted to be a hundred and fifty proof. You know, we had some rum that we used to get back in the day that was a hundred and fifty proof. It light you up, and we had to be macho. We had to be drinking that. So I would drink that hundred and fifty proof. I don't want no little nothing. And the wine, we used to drink the big jugs where you turn it up like that. The big jugs. So I've been drinking, and I'm 80 years old. I've been drinking ever since I was 15, 16. I used to make my own grape wine. So I'm a drinker, so I'll have a glass of wine. That's what I do. I got nobody for nobody, no time, nobody telling me what's how around. I'm a grown man. I do this. I'll let a law uh, judge me on that. I think I can afford, when after I take care of my business, to have a glass of wine. That's what I have. So that's so much for that. Any more questions on that? I'll just let that do that. You can shut that down on this one. And over here, chapter five, verse five. What does it say? Made lawful to you this day are all kinds of tayyibat halal lawful foods. Which Allah has made lawful, meat slaughtered, well, mine is like with brackets or something, have you, somebody else. 
Did you finish reading? What does it say? This day all good things are made lawful for you. And the food of those who have been given the book is lawful for you. And your food is lawful for them. Good. Let's just stop right there. What is that saying? Anybody can tell me what they understand that to be saying? We can eat their food. Huh? Yeah, that's what you understand. Anybody understand anything different than that? That we can, the people who are, whoever is called people of the book in the Arabic term, Ahlul Kitab, the people of the book, meaning people who have received the divine revelation from God, what their, that their food, and normally people limited to Christians and Jews, but I say anybody who has a, received a book, received a book. If they receive a book from Allah, then their food is lawful for us and our food is lawful for them. You see, except what Allah has made unlawful. You see, that he's clearly spelled out. But now we're just talking about a group of people. Can we eat from their plate, from their table? So these people are called the Akalukatab. We can eat from their food, right? So let's just assume we're talking about only the Jews and the Christians. We can eat their food? Hmm? Yes. What about if they make some uh, pork chops? Yes. Hmm? Yes. Yeah, in their well, book, pork is not forbidden. Excuse me? Even in their verse, in their book, pork is not forbidden, that's their food. Yeah, but in the Jewish book, they say pork is forbidden. Excuse me? No, I'm answering his question. He said if it's in their if it's in their book, it's not there's no problem. I said in the Jewish book, pork is forbidden. I'm answering his question. Uh, his his statement about if it's in the book. If it's not in the book, and I'm saying the Jewish people say that they can't eat pork. And many of the Christians might say the same thing following that. But the Jewish people for sure, the Jewish people, they, they, they're not allowed to eat pork. Many other things also. But pork, I'm just asking pork. So Allah said their food is lawful. Was there any exception there in that, in that verse? No. So you just take it and mean whatever they, 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 if they serve it, you can eat it. Unless it's something that Allah says is unlawful. You see? So now, let's take, see what Allah says was unlawful. Chapter 5, verse 3. This is in anybody's book. Yeah. This is unlawful in anybody's book. What does it say? Forbidden to you that which dies of itself <clears throat> and blood and the flesh of swine and that on which any other name than that of Allah has been invoked. Uh -huh. And the strangled animal and that beaten to death, and that killed by a fall, and that killed by boring with the horn, <clears throat> and that which wild beasts have eaten, except what you slaughter, and that which is sacrificed on stone, set up for idols, and that you seek to divide by idols. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> that is transgression. Mm -hmm. This day, this day have those who disbelieve, despair of their religion, so fear them not and fear me. This day I have perfected for you your religion and completed my favor to you and chosen for you 
Islam as a religion. Good. All right, let's, let's stop there. All right, so now, before we ask any further questions, let's, let's flip over to chapter 16, starting at verse 114. Because the question I want to ask now is who made pork haram for the Jews? Who made pork? In the Arabic, if you want to say kinzir, if you want to say kinzir, el kinzir. So we'll use that word. I'm saying that word to me doesn't mean pork. You see, but for the sake of the argument here, let's just assume it means pork, al kinzir. So, who made pork haram for the Jews, according to what we read in the Quran? Anybody can tell me? Themselves. Huh? Themselves. They make haram. Excuse me. The Jews. They make themselves haram. They made it themselves. Yeah. Haram? Pork? Did the law make it haram? You, no, huh? Mm hmm. Good. Do you eat pork? Cool. You? No, I don't. Any reason why? Just because your family never ate it or something? No. <laughs> huh? I don't smoke, I do pork. Yeah, I'm not talking about what you don't do. There's a lot of things you don't do that maybe you haven't had a chance to do. That's the only reason you don't do them, or you haven't done, or you don't do because. You just don't like doing it or whatever. I'm just saying, is it because you don't like eating pork? I don't know because that would be a problem, you know. <laughs> yeah, you, I, I don't think you ever ate a piece of pork in your life, have you? Because your family never served you pork. You see? If you grew up in a society like this here, and you became Muslim at some later time in your life, more than likely you ate some pork. People in this lifestyle, in this uh, society, grew up eating bacon and eggs, pork chops and all that kind of stuff. Pig ears and pig feet. So we grew up like that. You see? We ate the pork. So now I'm saying, who made pork haram for the Jews? Okay, let's take a look. I don't want to put you on the hot seat. I'm trying to find a whipping person. I don't think it's fair to use you. I need somebody to whip on though, but I'm not going to use you. <laughs> but I'm, I'm itching for somebody to whip on. Really, I am. But I'm, I need somebody to whip on, but I'm not going to use you. Let's look at chapter 16, verse 114. We'll start there. What does it say? So eat of that which Allah has given you of the good of the lawful and good things and give thanks to Allah for the favor it is that he has uh, that that is that he uh, uh, that if he it is that you serve it says eat of the of, of what Allah has given you of the lawful and good things you see the lawful and good things the things that are lawful and the things that are good I think the word is halal and tayyib. It's lawful and it's something that you like. You see? Because it might be lawful and you don't like it. You know, you maybe you don't like it. Like, you understand, I don't like uh, uh, goat. I like goat, but I don't like to eat it because it's got those little pieces of bone in it that they cut up sometime and, I'm, and then I don't like the idea that they might get caught here. So I try to stay away from goat, although I like it. If you clean it up good, I'll eat it, but I'm scared of it because it's got little shivers in it, I call it. So it's not tied for me. I'll take uh, oxtails or some other thing. But it's lawful. So Allah says, eat, of, Allah's telling you, eat of that and be thankful for the favor that he's shown you. He said, he has forbidden you only, only, he has forbidden you only, in the ma, only, only this. He has haram for you. That which dies of itself. That which dies of itself. That's not a species. 
That's not a species. That's the condition of a food, of an animal. That's the condition of an animal. What it died of itself. It died of itself. It could be a cow, or ox, a goat, or anything. If it died of itself, you shouldn't eat it. The blood. You shouldn't eat or drink the blood. That's not a species. That's a condition of something, you see. The flesh of swine, they say. Let's just leave that for a minute. The flesh of swine, Lachmul Kanzia, something like that, whatever the term is. So now they want to say that's a species. That's a species. That's not a condition. It's a species stuck in there. All right, let's keep going. And that over which a law uh, uh, other than a law's name has been uh, uh, been invoked. That's a condition. That's not a species. But whoever is driven to necess necessity, not desiring to exceed the limits, uh, then surely a law is forgiven, uh, merciful. So now with those things, we see conditions of food and all of a sudden somebody stuck in and translated the word swine out of all, everything on the planet earth they picked out a swine not a snake you know not a, a buzzard a, a, a pig and they said that so if I said well excuse me well Allah forgot a condition of food what about rotten meat? That's a condition of food. What if I come upon some meat and it's rotten? What if I go to the meat market and the guy's got some meat in there, it's been sitting there, and I said, well, how much is that meat over there? And he says, oh, this is, a, I'm clearing out this year, the lamb. This is some lamb we have left over. Uh, it's a 50 cent a pound. I said, 50 cent a pound for lamb? It's normally $3.50 cent a pound. Listen, no, we're just trying to clear it out. We're not selling it no more. And when he lifted up, some bugs and stuff are all under it. He lifted up and it's green and different colors. I said, man, come on. This meat is rotten. He said, but I'll just, just get rid of those bugs and all that and put some curry and stuff on it. You, you never know. Curry it up. Put some curry. Make it curry. You'll never know the difference. You know, buy it all that and you take it to your restaurant and make curry. And sell it, you know, you, you make a fortune. So rotten meat. I said, what did Allah say about rotten meat? What are they going to tell me? Nothing. I said, Allah forgot to mention rotten meat. I said, that's what this Lachmul Kanzir thing is, rotten meat. It means meat that you have seen is bad. Now you stuff Allah, brother. Why are you saying, you know, so good. I said, no, there's no problem. Let's continue. Now, I'm glad you said that. Now I got competition going on now. See, now I got an, an opposition. So now I'm getting ready to put in some work on the opposition, you see, because you stuff a law. You see what I said, rotten meat. I said the law didn't mention it, if what you're saying is right. And so he overlooked that. And some Christians can say, I thought you said it was fully detailed. There's no details about eating rotten meat. You see? And why did he put a species in with all conditional food? All of a sudden, he put a species in. And this guy over here, he says it's rotten meat. Now, who's right? Well, let's take a look. Let's read on. 116. Chapter 16, verse 116. And utter not... For what your tongues describe the lie. Don't you open your mouth and make a lie opening your mouth and saying this. This is lawful and this is unlawful. So that you forge a lie against the law. Surely those who forge a lie against the law will not prosper. Now, isn't that something that this comes right after the verse that the law detailed those things, what you shouldn't be eating? After he detail, details those things, what you shouldn't be eating, and now you put pork in there, and the law said, don't you lie. Don't you open your mouth and make a lie. And, and who told you to put pork in there with all these uh, species? I mean, with all these conditions. 
Who told you to put a species in there? Be careful. Don't you make a lie. Don't you utter a lie. He said, if you do that, a little enjoyment and then a painful chastisement. Now, here's the point. And those who were Jews and those who were Jews, we prohibited. We prohibited. We made haram, right? What we have already uh, related to you. And we did them no wrong, but they wronged themselves. So I said, well, wow, that's something. Now he made he gave you those verses. He put somebody stuck the word pig in there. Allah said, be careful. Don't you out of your line and make this and say this one thing after the other. And then he said, now for the Jews, we already told you what we made unlawful for them. And we didn't do them no wrong for making them what we made unlawful. They wronged themselves. So I will say, well, excuse me. What did Allah say he made unlawful for the Jews? He said, he already told you. So what did he tell me? So go look over there in chapter uh, 3, verse 92. Go look over in chapter 3, verse 92, and Allah will tell you what he already made haram for the Jews. Let's go and look. Let's go and look. What does it say? All food was lawful to the children of Israel, except what Israel has made unlawful to himself before the Torah was revealed. Say, so bring me the Torah and recite it, if you should be truthful. I said, well, wow, look at that. What does it say about food? It says, all food was lawful for the children of Israel before the Torah was revealed. Did it say all food there? Yeah. Does all food include what? Pig? Yeah. Does it? It's all food, yeah. All food has to include pig. Yes. So pig was lawful for the Jews before the Torah was revealed. To bring the Torah and show it to me. So now I'm saying, who made it unlawful for the Jews? Who made it unlawful for the Jews? Pig. Allah said it was lawful. All food was lawful. Who made pig unlawful? Because pig was lawful. Is that right or is it wrong? If I'm wrong, don't be shy. Just say, brother, you're wrong. It doesn't say all food. It says most of the food. A lot of food. Some food. It says Kuli Tom or something like that. I'm not looking. It says all food. So all food to me includes pig. So I'm asking the Sheikh from Asha University, excuse me, brother, who made pork unlawful for Jews? You? Did you make it? You uttered your mouth, out of your mouth, this is unlawful. Did you do it? Did the Jews, Jews do it for themselves? Who? What answer are they going to give me? I'm just sitting here waiting for an answer. I'm just, just innocent. I'm not bothering nobody. It's an innocent question. What answer are they going to give me? They have to say, we made it because we thought that the word kinzir meant pig. And so we said pig is unlawful. It's unlawful for the Jews. The Jews don't eat pork. The Jews don't eat pork and we, we can eat their food, but we can't eat pork because they don't eat pork. I said they don't eat pork because they made it unlawful for themselves. Allah didn't make it unlawful for them. He didn't make it unlawful for you. Because why? You can eat their food. You can eat their food. You just got through saying, brother, we can eat their food except what is unlawful. Well, Allah didn't make that unlawful. He said that was lawful. You can eat their food. Now you're jammed. Now, if somebody was sitting here with some authority, I would drill their behind to no end. You'll be jammed. You couldn't get away with me with that. I don't care how much Arabic you know. I don't care what university you graduated from. It's got nothing to do with me. It's the verses right here. I would not let you get away. I'll burn your behind to no end. 
you have to eat this lunch. You have to eat these verses. You don't know what the hell you're talking about. And you're out here running off at the mouth and making things halal and haram. Here's the verses right here. Now, why is it I'm sitting here can point this out and then you got nothing to say? I'm talking to my imaginary shake here. You can't open your mouth. You got nothing to say. What are you going to say to me? Brother, you don't know Arabic. Brother, you stuff all up. Brother, what are you going to say to me? You got nothing to say to me. Go say that mess to somebody else. Go open your mouth and make a lie against the law to somebody else, not to me. You see, you can't do that to me. And poor little innocent Muslims, uh, so-called people who come in into this deen, and now they go tell, well, I can't eat bacon, I can't eat that, I can't eat that. Well, stuff along with you, brother. And then the average person, uh, y'all can't eat pork, you can't do this, you got to do that, you got to do that. I don't want nothing to do that. That's that religion you got. You got some religion that don't nobody want it. And anybody who want it, they'll grab it for a minute until they decide that, oh, we don't want this. And especially young folks. Young folks don't want that mess you got. They want Islam out of the Quran if they ever could understand what it is. They'd love it. Everybody would love the Islam in the Quran. That Islam that you got, that religion that you got, don't nobody want that. I certainly wouldn't want it. I had it and I don't know. I gave it away. I threw that in the garbage. Now, here's the question. There it is right there. Who made pork unlawful for the Jews? Until somebody can step up and answer that question, case is closed. Allah didn't make it unlawful for the Jews. And he said, you can eat their food and it's lawful. They made it unlawful for themselves. I can go on with this argument. Let me just stop right there. Hamza, yeah. It says, uh, except what Israel made unlawful to themselves before the Torah was revealed. So yeah, before, yeah, they made it, yeah. Yeah, there's nothing. Yeah, there's nothing in the Quran and the Torah that Allah made unlawful for them. They put that in. The, see, I, I made that case in the swine flu argument. The Jews used to worship the pig. You see, and I get in that swine flu argument. I gave some scriptures from uh, some other scripture. I forgot what it was now, uh, where they talked about the benefit of the pig and one thing after the other. I'm just saying they made it unlawful for themselves. Just like they don't eat shellfish or anything like that. You see? They don't eat this, they don't eat that. They don't put the butter on the same plate with the cheese and the cheese with the applesauce and all that. That's some mess that they do. They do that. They made it for themselves. So now, if you open your mouth and say, brother, you can't, you can't eat. If you don't want to eat pork, don't eat it. If you say it's not lawful, that's something different. If you just want to de deny yourself a, a, a favor that Allah has given you, well, you got it. You got it like that. You got so much favors. You can. No, I don't need that one. Excuse me, Allah. Yeah, you don't gave me so many favors. I don't need that no more. Excuse me, Allah. You don't gave me. Allah says if you count the favors, you cannot uh, uh, measure them. Say, so, oh Allah, you don't gave me so many favors. That's enough. I don't need no more. I don't need no more favors. I'm good. I'll deny these. I'll deny these favors. Which of the favors of your Lord will you deny? No, I'll deny these. I don't need them. I got nobody to argue with. On this, this, this here, this is this is the clear, open and shut case. There's no, there's nobody can come up against these verses here. What are you gonna say? Imagine, just imagine you an opponent. Somebody act like they they want to be the bad guy and come and come at me with something. What are you gonna come at with? Now give you the verses. Now give me what verse you got in the Quran. What are you gonna tell me to overthrow these verses? What are you gonna tell me that overturn these verses here? All food was lawful for the Jews. Now, Allah made a mistake, and then he said, oh, let me make that unlawful. Allah made something lawful and then made it unlawful. Allah, or, huh? the, some, maybe somebody, Allah, look, you know, you had that debate with Moses, and Moses corrected you. This is this being, being sarcastic. It's, it, it's, it sounds bad, but this is the kind of S-H-I, whatever that word spells, 
that you guys be putting out there. That Moses argued with the law and the law had to bargain down and said, you know, come to think of it, that is you, you right, let me cut it in half. They can't, they can't make all that so law. And so now somebody comes and says, well, the law, you know, you have made that lawful. Why'd you make it unlawful? So when I make it lawful, you said all food was lawful. Wow, I did say that, didn't I? Hmm. Well, no, well no, don't say nothing. They won't know. I had made it lawful. But you, why didn't you catch me before I then now I didn't reveal the thing now it's too late. You say Allah made a mistake. He made it lawful, now he made it unlawful. He made something lawful and then made it unlawful. What kind of foolishness is that? Allah made something lawful, then made it unlawful. He said all food was lawful for the Jews. Food. And then he revealed the Torah and say, that's unlawful. He needed the Torah. He didn't know that. You can see how silly that is. We can stop that recording there. You know, it gets to be silly season. We can do this kind of thing all night long. It's silly season.